said, sir, you've been in business. You've been in entertainment, The Apprentice, and you've been in politics. Who are the toughest? Who are the worst? I said, the worst are the politicians. The toughest are the politicians. The meanest are the politicians. And the biggest lying scum are the politicians. <laughs> like, like Adam Shifty Schiff. Where do you meet people like this? He actually made up a story about my phone call with the president of Ukraine, who, by the way, is a brave man. He's hanging in. He's a brave man. And I like him because, you know, during that ridiculous impeachment waste of time, and the Republicans stood by us, we were 196 and 0. When did you ever hear Republicans do that? But this was truly a scam. But the President of Ukraine said he did nothing wrong. He could have said he did something or he thought, well, I wasn't appropriate. You know, all the crap you have to listen to, right? He said he did absolutely nothing. I called him up to congratulate him on his victory. He said he did nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong. I'm glad the tape — I'm glad that tape was going. Those transcribers were writing during that call, because otherwise it could have been. But this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with some people that are truly evil, truly bad people. Let me also express my enormous gratitude to every single one of you here today in the audience. We appreciate you being here. It's a great crowd. That's a lot of people. And that's a lot of fake news. Look at all those cameras up there. Wow. That's a lot of people. And my friends from North Carolina, they've come to 92. Our beautiful friends, they've come to 90, I think it's 92 rallies and CPACs and other things. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I don't know if their husbands are happy about it, but, but they are beautiful people. They're great people. Thank you very much. Thank you for your dedication. You know what? The bottom line, they love our country. They love our country. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we've been together from the very beginning of this journey, and we are a long way from being done because we had something very bad happen, and we have to keep it going. Uh, we're not going to have a country left for an amazing 48 years. CPAC has helped to conserve, protect, and defend our magnificent American heritage. And this year, we're being vividly reminded how fragile and precious that heritage really is. I never knew how important being president was. I was president for four years. I think I did a great job. We did things that nobody else could do. But The importance of the President, when I look at what's happening to our country today, the President is such an important representative. Now, we obviously know that. But just a wrong word or a wrong — like a yawn, or going to sleep very early, like at 4 o'clock. <laughs> no, you just can't uh, — it's just uh, such an important it's so important, psychologically so important for our country. I never really realized to that extent. I knew it was important, but you assume you're going to be doing certain things that are right. We rebuilt our economy and energy independence and all of those things. But you also have to portray a strength to the outside world. Otherwise, they're going to walk all over you. And that's what they're doing right now. You could take the five worst presidents in American history and put them together and they would not have done the damage that Joe Biden and his administration has done in just a very short 13 months. And no matter how you look at it, our country has totally lost its self-confidence. 
lost its self-confidence. We as a country have no confidence anymore, but we will get it back, and we'll get it back stronger than ever before. Whoever heard of that? Whoever heard of that? Our country has lost its self-confidence. Whoever heard of that? Whoever thought you'd be hearing? But it's true, we've lost our self-confidence. When you see the way we withdrew, when you see the things, the, the stupidity, the open border concept, who wants this? Prisons from other countries being emptied out into our country. Just over one year ago, we had the most secure border in U.S. history, record low gas prices. American energy independence, the fastest economic recovery in the history of our country, fastest economic recovery in history, and unrivaled military. We rebuilt the military, and we added Space Force on top of it. And peace and quiet was all around the world. Now, inflation is the highest in 40 years. Economists are talking about five, six, seven, and even eight dollar a gallon gasoline. Supply chains are crumbling. Store shelves are empty. Millions of illegal aliens are rushing our borders. Murders are setting records in our cities. The streets of our Democrat-run cities are drenched in blood. A radical left zealot has been nominated to the Supreme Court of the United States. China is threatening Taiwan. Russia is decimating Ukraine. Iran is on the cusp of a nuclear bomb. We ended the worst and most dangerous deal I've ever seen, and now they want to go back to it, the Iran nuclear deal. America and our great military has been humiliated in its surrender from Afghanistan, and that's what it was. It was a surrender for no reason whatsoever. We wanted to get out, but we had to get out with strength and with dignity. And a major war in Europe may very well erupt. That's how they start. Exactly what's happening today, this is how they start. Joe Biden has turned calm into chaos, competence into incompetence, stability into anarchy, and security into catastrophe. The Russian attack on Ukraine is appalling. It's an outrage and an atrocity that should never have been allowed to occur. It never would have occurred. We are praying for the proud people of Ukraine. God bless them all. God bless them all.